morning for everybody that, that actually showed up today. Just a quick overview of what this show is and why we created it. Um, I deal in the health market, so I deal with a lot of people in pain. And also, we all are striving to, you know, uh, be better in some sort of area of our, in our lives. A lot of people want to get their wealth up, so you got to get your health up before your wealth up, before your wealth gets up, right? So uh, that's why we call it the health and wealthiness show. And what we do here is we interview um, people uh, from a health standpoint, from physical therapists to chiropractors. We have some fascinating people on this show from the medical uh, professional world that are going to give some great solutions. They're not just coming up here and just speaking about their business, but they're going to give you some great solutions that you can walk away with and be better. That's the whole point of us doing this is to help people get better and provide great content. Um, first of all, I'd like to give a shout out to Star Cinema Grill. Isn't this theater great? I mean, these guys have done a wonderful job as far as these chairs. I was in here the other day and pretty much fell asleep uh, <laughs> watching one of the movies here. So don't fall asleep during the show, but uh, it can generally lead you to that point. So if we can run uh, just a, a quick clip of Star Cinema here, um, it, you can see it's a beautiful place here. Um, the chandeliers here, you can see their bar area. It's, it's absolutely uh, wonderful what they're doing here. And as you can see, some of you are here, the people online, you can see how beautiful this place is. So if you're in the Missouri City area, make sure you come out and uh, take a look-see, watch a movie, get some good food, okay? So we're gonna get into it. Our first guest is Mr. James Miller, and um, he's actually here in Sugarland, Missouri City area, works with a lot of boomers. I know, you know, you boomers don't like me calling you boomers, but you know, it's what everybody else says, so hey, it's <laughs> it just is what it is. So let's welcome Mr. James Miller. Doing great. Doing great. Nice to, to see you. So uh, James, you know, I'm over at the gym that he works out in uh, throughout the week, at least twice a week, and I'm working out with him, and I see him screaming <laughs> at uh, <laughs> the older generation. He's screaming like they're, you know, like they're at football practice. So my first question to you is, why do you treat them so rough? <laughs> well, first of all, to let them know that it's not a social hour. Right. And that your health is serious. Uh -huh. and you need to focus on it. And it's an old cliche that's true. It says once an adult, twice a child. So we start to revert back to the things we, you know, our minds don't stay focused long. We, we, we hear, but we don't hear. The, good thing, the good thing about that is um, a lot of people use age as an excuse. excuse. When they start getting up there in you age, go. you get in your 60s, yeah. 70s. I don't think age is man-made, first of all. It's just right? a number. It's just a number. Just a number. But you think, hey, I can't push an older person, a person that's 60, 70. I can't push them. But I think what you're doing is actually the right thing to get them to actually do something that they actually can do, but they probably feel like they can't. Well, Jonathan, let me say, when I took over this class four years ago, mm -hmm. there were four people in it. They were using thorough bands to work out in a small room. The guy left, they asked me to take it over temporarily. I moved them into the weight room. We put the bands down, we started picking up some iron. They loved it. The class grew to over 30 people, and it kept growing, so I had to start another class. Mm -hmm. And I gave it to one of the other trainers. That's a beautiful thing. But um, the old cliche says, if you don't use it, you lose it. You lose it. Now, he, and, and that's a perfect example of what you're saying. Now, when people get older, um, a lot of things that I teach is muscle activation. It's a beautiful thing that you're doing in your class because you're having them lift. I came and saw the circuits that you have yes. everybody go through, and they're doing bench press. They're over doing slides. They're doing squats. Yes. And they're on the floor and they're doing abs, right? Yes. We got 75, 80 year old people on the floor doing abs the correct way, and right? Planking. And planking for over a minute, planking two minutes. for over a minute, two minutes. Yes. So how important? I want to talk about how important the muscle activation plays in a person staying young because a lot of people just like to go out and walk, and you know they think walking is enough. Well, the majority of people, especially if you're still working, and you go to work, you have a good day, you come home, you feel like, hey, I still, I, I had a good day because I'm, I'm not really just wore out. Right. I still got a little energy. But what you don't realize is that 
your muscles are getting tighter from the repetitive motion that you do every day and they're getting weaker because you're not doing anything else with them. Right. So by strengthening the muscle, you take the pressure off your joints uh -huh. and you use the muscle and they last longer and they keep getting better. And the muscle and actually, they act and the muscle actually carries you around. Yes, One it thing does. that people need to understand is we carry fat around, but yes. muscle carries us yes, around. Right. So every time <laughs> you lift your arm, it should be very easy if you have the muscle yeah. to do it. That's right. right. So what do you have to say for um, you know, the older generation that is starting to go this way or starting to get on walkers and canes. And a lot of the time it's not, it's not because of some uh, real, you know, hectic in injury. A lot of times it's just for inactivity. So well, what would you say to that person? First of all, we live in a world where everything is protracted that we do. Our shoulders are coming forward. You think about it. We're on cell phones, when we eat, when we're on the computer, on the mouse, everything is protracted. So, I tell all my clients, just retract your shoulder. Start training the muscle. We've done wrong for so long that wrong feels right and right feels wrong. So I want to stop so you for one second. If we could have everybody in this theater, I just looked at a lot of people in this theater when you said this, uh -huh. they're naturally <laughs> already like It's this. natural because it's comfortable. So can we have Get everybody out of practice comfort. just going and you don't, this way? The thing about it, you don't have to go walk around like, you know, just simply retract your shoulders. And I tell you, if you start doing it, what will make you continue to do it is that you will be aware of other people when you see them coming this way. And you'll be like, oh, I don't want to look like that. Right. Okay. You want to keep everything up. And right. it doesn't, it's, 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 it's <laughs> not a, especially as we get older, because then we start, boom, and you find yourself like this and can't straighten up right. because you put the curvature in your spine. Now, now, quick question. I talk to individuals that are getting up in age, and I talked to a guy one time, and he said, you know, hit me with one of these lanes. Uh, you know, if you're going to talk talk to me about how tall I am, at least have an original joke. Don't say, you know, how the weather, weather up there, up there <laughs> you know, all, all that stuff. So he hit me with something that was not original. And then he told me, you know, I'm 6'2 now. I used to be 6'4. I said, what happened? I actually Somebody remember that Somebody chopped your ankles down? Uh, I mean, what happened? Did you, uh, you know, so can you, uh, can you explain a little bit about what happens when a person starts to bend over, when it starts to kind of have that pelvic turn, and they're, they're that, and that's just it. Yeah, your pelvic starts, your body starts to reform mm -hmm. to the way that you're carrying it. Right. You're training the body to be that way. So yes, you and actually that is a cause of a lot of back problems, hip problems, because it's, you're taking your body out of its natural form, right. which is here. And you're putting more pressure, you're putting on, more other pressure areas on those areas that are not ready to support you. Support that pressure. All right, now let's talk to some people who have just never Work even out. thought about working out ever in their life. I was with James a couple of days ago. If you could run that clip just for a second, you can see that we were just doing a couple of exercises here, a couple of exercises here in, uh, in actually the gymnasium part of, uh, uh, of your workout facility. And he was just taking me through some simple things that any and everybody could do to get started. So how about we talk to the individual that maybe wants to start, but has maybe been intimidated and they're just like, it's going to be too hard for me. Or maybe they saw, they walked in the gym and saw somebody screaming while they were bench pressing, ah, and like got scared or something. What, how would that person get started? What is the one, two, three step of them just getting started to do a couple things? Well, the first thing is mentally knowing that you're working out for you, not someone else. So and it's mindset. It's a mindset. Right. And also, your goals are not their goals. And, and the, the people that I deal with on the Mercy Basic, we, I try to give them quality of life. You're not trying to win the Miss America or Miss America contest. You're not trying to do competition. I do have some like that, but the majority of my people, I just want to be able to move when I want to move and not when my body tells me I can move. I want to be able to play with my grandkids and tire them out. Do the normal you know, things that, you do, that, yeah, that you're your doing ADLs. for a long period of time. Yeah. Now, let's just, I want you to stand, and if we can use this chair, right? If somebody's watching us online, or maybe there's somebody here that really feels what you're saying, how can they get started at home just by themselves to get their body stronger, or maybe they can't even make it uh, around the block because they're too weak. What's uh, maybe a couple of little exercises that they can do to let's get started? Let's go like 
starting out, we, we need to warm up. Okay? So just come in here and march. So it's just a march? Just a march. Holding on to the you're holding on for security, and you're marching. So if you feel, as we get older, we lose our equilibrium. You know, our balance is not as good. So get something to secure yourself. And you and don't have to do, you can do this for about a minute. This is also working, minute. this is also working the hip flexor, correct? All of this. Right. right. Lower yeah. abs. And lower abs, hip flexors. And if they have, you if know. you have a stronger lower abdominal, that actually controls your balance. All right. So that just that march alone has a great benefit. Your core is the foundation to your body. Okay. So when you strengthen that core, everything else is going to become easier. Your mental state is going to be better because you're going to find yourself a lot of things we do as we get older, when I get ready to sit down, I put my hand down. Uh, let, let, stop for a sec. Stop for a sec. Come on, sit back down. <laughs> stop for a second. You're getting into a whole nother conversation. No, 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 no. I, I actually <laughs> forgot to look at everybody as they were sitting here. Uh -huh. Most of the time when I'm talking to individuals about joint pain or I'm doing a little seminar, I see half the room. <laughs> Grab this chair yeah. and take all the pressure <laughs> off of the muscle, muscle. that's supposed to you're not making, it. You're not letting it work. You're not letting it work. Yes. Right? Yeah. And you see that all. Yeah. So my next thing I was going to get to is the exercise. Sitting and standing. Get back up and do the exercise, Sit, sir. Sitting and if standing. If you don't mind. And, and not, in a, not in a bench, but in a regular chair at home. You know, dining room chair, sit down. Actually, this chair is too, stand up. too tall for you. But it is. It's you fine. can do it. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> stand and sit. Just a straight sit. Straight sit. And not using more hands. And press not down. down. No. Control. And, and press up. Do that. Start off with 10 reps. Three sets. And increase from there. Okay? Right. And then as you get stronger, you can get a lower C. Now Build your way up. Question for you. Yes, sir. Now, it's a lot of people that uh, like sports. You know, you see a lot of people playing tennis. A lot of them like to go out and do the golf thing. Um, how many times have you heard people say, you know, I used to do this, <laughs> but I just can't do it anymore, <laughs> right? Or now I'm too old to even look that way and try that, right? What is your advice or your rebuttal to that? I don't, I don't go for that. And, and you know, I've, I've heard that so many times, especially when, you know, I had a hip replacement or I had my knee done and I'm like, well, when did you have your knee done? Oh, it was back in 89. <laughs> <laughs> and you still dealing with it? <laughs> so first, I kind of let them know. You, you probably have a lot of scar tissue built up because you were babying it. Mm -hmm. And you've become a chronic pain patient because you're afraid to move it. Right. But sometimes you have to go through a little discomfort to get to the comfort. To the comfort part. Now, let's, let's, let's jump ship for a second. Okay. Over to um, what should people expect? Um, we talked about this last time. When a person just starts to work out, no, no matter how, how old you are, you start to work out and you start to feel that burn, that first burn. And some people mistake it for being injured. The next day they're so sore, they're like, I'm, I'm, I'm injured, I'm hurt, right? So how do you coach a person through that, yeah. through that phase? I actually tell my clients, you gotta break the muscle down to build it up. Mm -hmm. It's been sitting there doing nothing for so long it's going to be in shock. Right. It's your body's going to be like, what did you just do to me? Right. No, what did he do to me? You know, and the thing about it is your body's been in control of you all of this time. Now you're going to take back your body control and your be body. in control of it, so which is in, cro in control of your life. How long should a person expect that burn to, to feel that way? How, how, how long should they feel that way before they start getting better, start seeing results, start getting stronger from a weightlifting program? That depends on the person. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason I say that is because if you continue to move, you may not be able to. I might have you doing exercise where you're coming up here. Boom, just, just doing that. And you go to raise up your shoulder. Oh, my God, what did he do to me? <laughs> no, the muscle's like, hey. And you're going like, uh-uh. And only if you can go this far. And it's sore, but you're moving it. You're telling your body that it's a new sheriff in town. Right. And it's me. Yeah. And eventually, when that soreness wears out, you be like, oh yeah, that feels pretty good. Then when we do it again, you you won't get that soreness anymore again unless you just completely quit now and how, have to start how, over. How often should should a person work out the lower body and the upper body? All right. So if I'm working out lower body, how many days a week should I do this? All right. 
if I'm working out upper body, how many days a week should I do this and when should I take off? Depending on the exercise that you're doing mm -hmm. and the type of workout you're doing, if I'm just every other started, day, I'm just getting started. Okay, just getting started. You come in three times a week. I can do that same workout Monday, Wednesday, and Friday because you have a day rest in between. Gotcha. Okay, and you give your body a chance to recuperate, gotcha. and you come back and we do it again. Gotcha. And when I see you getting stronger, I'll either add some reps or we'll add some weights, right. or we'll just take you to another level, and then you start feeling good. And you know, and the thing is like. You'll be able to say, you know what? I worked in my garden and I felt really good and I, d I didn't get as winded. <laughs> People get winded I, in, I the garden. in the garden. <laughs> I didn't get as winded. That is you know, oh, I was able to raise up and, you know, my body held me. I didn't hurt like I did. Right. And that's how you tell your results. You know, you just. Beautiful. Beautiful. It's, it's what you put in is what you get out. And that, just and like anything else. with everything. Yes. Well, James, look, as we come towards the end of this segment, I'd like to thank you for coming on the show. Uh, could you tell anybody that may be in our audience or that may be uh, online and may want to come out and work out with you, how can they get in contact with you? I know you had an email address. My email address is hawkmiller at hotmail.com or get fit with Jim. Uh, I'm all also at Missouri City Tennis and Rec Center located on 2701 Cartwright, uh, actually uh, Cypress Point off of Cartwright. Uh, feel free to come by and ask for me. I will come out and talk the, to you. The, the beauty of his program is I love to go up there and just see everybody working together collectively going through all of the different exercises. Yes. And sometimes they pump up each other. Yes. And if they come late. Yeah. Uh, you just go do cardio. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we teach our kids to be on time and be punctual. The same thing. We have to practice what we preach. That's so right. if you come in late, oh, can I? Uh, straight over I'll to the see treadmill. You, well you can come join the floor exercises when we finish. There you go. Well, look, James, I appreciate you my pleasure. coming on, my man. Thank you, sir. Can you all give James a round Thank of applause? You. Thank you. All right. Our next guest is Adam. He'll be up in the next uh, 60 seconds. Can I do the quick set here? Uh, this is Adam. Thank you for coming on the show. Um, Adam is actually a physical therapist over at uh, Texans Children's over in the Woodlands. So, um, Adam, have a seat, sir. If you can come on over a little closer. We don't have the chair. We actually have a table. I'm going to show you some different things from a physical therapy uh, perspective. Now, you work with a lot of people, mm -hmm. right? Um, what In physical therapy, what is one of the things that you see that you wish could be improved from working with a client, let's just say a client has a back injury, right? right? And you worked on them for two months and they leave. Um, how often do you see them fall off and end up coming back? Or what are some of the some of the bad things that you think you, you would want to address and give people information on that they can get better at? Sure. You know? um, when it comes down to it, the exercises that you've been given those home exercises that the physical therapist is talking to you about. Uh, this is something that hopefully is going to be making you better throughout your your treatment. Uh, but now that say eight weeks or six weeks goes right. by, right. and most people think, oh man, I feel great, I can do all these things. Mm -hmm. uh, but then they're like, hey, I, I because I feel great, maybe I don't need to do these anymore. I'm just going to continue going back out, and then we see people come back in a few months later, maybe a year later, and because they, just, they have- They're, they're just recycling Exactly, just process. because of poor compliance. Poor compliance. So if, um, wouldn't you say that a person taking a program and making that a part of their life, I think the misconception now is, I'm gonna go to physical therapy, and they think physical therapy is a place like a restaurant, right? right? I'm gonna go there and I'm gonna get full and that's it, right? right. Or I'm gonna go there for a month, and you know what? 
I'm better, I'm good, right? But it really doesn't work that way. You have to make physical therapy, just like training, a part of your lifestyle. Wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. And I, and from my experience is if you have a good physical therapist, they're going to make you independent and they're going to make sure that you have set up a good schedule for yourself so that it, it's because when you're there, you may be there for like an hour. Right. And it's like maybe once or twice a week. That's a small portion of your entire life. Right. So if you have a good therapist, they're making sure that you're independent, that you're able to keep things going. So and it just doesn't stop at quickly, being done. Uh, how, how, what would you say to the person that's not good with being independent? Right. They actually, um, it's almost similar to training. When a person, uh, to get a person to train, they need a, a trainer, even though they know what to do. They need that person to tell them, hey, do this even though you know w exactly what you should be doing. How often do you run into that with physical therapy and how do you combat that? Sure, so uh, when it comes down to it, we're all different. Some, th some things motivate us. Some people are self-motivated. Some people have to work really hard to, to be motivated, but we have to figure out what that thing is. Right. Uh, and so that's gonna be like, I'll try to find that Hopefully on day one, what's that motivational could factor? It be, could it be working out with the um, yeah. uh, playing with the kids? Absolutely. Uh, if they have kids, or you know, maybe it's a wife that has a husband that wants to keep up, or you know, right. or the opposite. Yeah, it's it's always easier to be with someone else doing it. Right. Uh, I mean, I, I think that's a huge motivation. We just heard from the the last speaker saying the same thing. That that kind of group atmosphere is so important, uh, and they also that social aspect of it also helps kind of push us more. And what about accountability partners? Oh, right? Absolutely. Have, with, with social media nowadays, you have Facebook and you have all these groups. I mean, you can go on Facebook and look up physical therapy groups and it's thousands of people that are talking about pain or whatever that they're going through. Absolutely. Will you encourage something like that? Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, again, anything that motivates you, if, you, if it's a group that does it, absolutely. Okay. Uh, and find someone that's gonna push you to getting, again, maybe has similar goals to as you, uh -huh. and that's gonna push you to where you need to be. Okay, quick, let's get into some solutions. Sure. Um, before the show, I told you that we wanted to talk about the knee and the back, sure. because that's a big uh, part of a lot of individuals' issues nowadays, knee and back, and they play off of each other, actually. Yeah. So, let's talk about stretching, okay. because stretching can alleviate a lot of those problems before they come. Right. Um, when people hear warm up before you stretch, let's talk about why. I think people hear warm up, they hear warm up, but they don't even know why you should warm up. So can you dive into um, what, how the muscle reacts to warming up sure. right, versus not warming up? Right. So whenever I'm talking about warming up, I, th I think we're kind of on the same page here, is, is largely in relationship to like heart rate. Right, and also a lot of repetitive movement. Right. So you're increasing blood flow as your heart rate increases, but by doing that, your tissue's also getting more blood, mm -hmm. which is then going to help with the elasticity. Right. So if we're doing things dynamically and getting the heart rate up and also stretching at the same time, that's gonna be like the biggest bang for our buck. So can we break this down to give everybody a clear view of just say, like I like to say, uh, a dry sponge, okay. right? So if you have a dry sponge, that is that the perfect example of a cold muscle? A a absolutely. And if you, especially if you think about like the meniscus or the kind of like cushioning between like your leg bone and your thigh bone, uh -huh. uh, oftentimes it gets harder, right. similar to like a, uh, a dry sponge. And right. as you're moving it, motion is lotion, and it actually starts kind of loosening up that right. meniscus, making it more comfortable. So, so is it true that you could potentially hurt yourself if you're stretching cold. Absolutely. And how exactly does that happen? If I'm stretching cold, if I got, if I'm just, I just hopped out of the bed, you know, I've been laying in this position for eight hours, I get up and I'm about, I'm about to do a hamstring stretch. The fact that this hamstring is cold, what type of injury am I, did I open myself up to just now by trying to go through this stretch cold? Right, so potentially you could have strains, so muscle strains where like the muscles trying to combat what you're all you're kind of putting tension on it uh the the other thing is we're not just stretching muscle we also have nerve that is there so sometimes people will get that shooting pain down their leg uh, when they're sciatica. stretching oh is that sort of like the sciatica right pain? so yeah so yeah. it's running on the back part of your of your leg there 
And so if you're doing that without not only getting your muscles warmed up, but also that nerve warmed up so that you're moving well, right. uh, then you could also have some issues that kind of lead into like shooting pain. Okay, so let's get, let's, I, I know everybody's saying now, so what should I do when I get ready to stretch? Gotcha. So let's, let's keep in mind that we have all ages right. that, that are watching this. So let's just say we woke up in the morning <coughs> and I need to stretch to keep pressure off of my knee and my back. Right. Right. Could you take me through a simple warm up? Sure. And then maybe through, I would say, what, what is the most important muscle, the hamstring maybe for okay. the knee and back? Sure. If you can take us through a simple warm up that anybody could do getting out of the bed. Okay. Uh, so first thing in the morning, I always like uh, like like muscle prep. Uh, so meaning that we want to get everything kind of going while also getting our heart rate up. The best thing for that is to get the lower body involved or our legs involved. So if you're standing up and the first thing you do is we're kind of just going into a mini squat. Uh, so just kind of working here and you can do this for about two minutes so, straight. So the person that can't squat at all, the, I, I got sure. out of the bed and I'm on a walker, but I'm trying to get better. Right. Right. What should I do? So my thought is if you can stand up, we can bend our knees a little bit, right? Just as, as far as you can go without right. pain. Exactly. Okay. And so, and then that's where we, you know, standing up straight while you're doing that, holding on with, with, with something as well. Now, if that is even difficult, we can kind of bring it down. And if you're on the side of the bed and the first thing you do, just start working here, start getting those knees moving. So you're just kicking your leg out like a kid. With yeah. Them. And because when you're actually like when you're moving your lower body, it's increasing the heart rate quite quickly. Right. Okay. Uh, and, for, and for the and for the quad muscles and the hamstring, that's getting loose. Absolutely. So how long should I do something like this? What is what is the average time frame that I should try to go through that warm up? Right. So I, I ideally is like about two to three minutes. Okay. Right. So that's something that actually gets again motion is lotion gets like all of that those tissues kind of loosened up. It's getting your heart rate up just a little bit, especially since you're coming from a position where your heart rate is really low while you're laying down and then now you're sitting back up. You, you said something interesting a couple of days ago and I told you I was gonna take it from you. It was the rice in the right. sock or something like right. that. Could you talk to us about what that is? We're talking about warming up the muscle, right? So when you just talked about kicking your feet out and standing and walking in place, can I substitute that by putting something warm on the muscle? So I think it's a good adjunct, adjunct to it. So because putting the rice on the on, on the bag is great for actually heating up tissue, right? So kind of I want to kind of elaborate on that. So you can get a bag of rice, you can put it in your microwave for about like 45 seconds, and then you can put it inside of so, a sock. So any bag of rice? Well, is this we got to be Dan's careful. Rice? Is this uh, <laughs> so <laughs> what type of rice? It's actually like about? the the the. Uh, like the boil in a bag because that way that that plastic actually doesn't melt the last thing you want is to throw it inside of the microwave and now you got to clean up a mess okay so it actually can take more heat so no more than about 45 seconds is all all that you need you can put that inside of a sock or even inside of a pillowcase uh, and then you can actually put that on your hamstring kind of sit on there and then we can start doing these at the same time okay so I do I do I have this bag of rice that's in the sock underneath on my hamstring right and I'm still going through the same exercise, can I substitute that for the warm up? No, I, want, I, I wouldn't do that. In my opinion, I think both is, is, is better. Okay. Uh, I mean, but it's, again, we're just, we're, the more that we can do that to get our heart rate up and to also move at the same time, uh -huh. because we're just, by putting that heat on there, it's helping kind of help the tissue get started, but now we've got to add some movement in there with it. So how, how many times are we doing this warm up? I want to make sure that everybody understands exactly what to do. So right. I wake up in the morning, right? I got a bad back, I got bad knees. I'm going to the pantry <laughs> to get some rice, right? I'm going to get some rice. I'm going to put it, I'm going to warm it up 45 seconds. I'm going to put it in the sock. I'm going to sit it here. I'm going to do my leg twiddle right here right. for what 45 seconds or a minute I would or do two, two minutes, minutes two, two minutes, minutes yeah how many of those am i doing so ideally well, this is kind of like self-regulated so like if you can go there and do it five minutes that's good uh it's again what's going to feel going to basically get your body ready to then take those next few steps so my question to you now is when i do two and i say okay in my mind i'm done when i stand up what should i feel different right 
right. to where I know I've gotten to the point that I've done enough. Well, I mean, I, I think everyone's maybe stood up and they felt all of a sudden that they're that you just feel stiff. Mm -hmm. uh, that stiffness should not be there. So, like when you first stand up, your knees should actually feel like they've just done something, right? Because we're again activating your muscles, we're activating those nerves, uh, and so by doing all of that, the first thing that you do, you should not feel really heavy. You should feel you light. You shouldn't feel like this. You should feel a lot lighter, and you should actually feel like you can continue taking that next step. So it should feel like basically the pressure, a lot of the pressure is being taken off. Absolutely, because we've activated those muscles to kind of gotcha. decrease the pressure on the that, knee. That makes sense. So my next question is, now that the muscles are warm, now we're going to go into the stretch. Sure. So you have this table out here. Sure. I want you to show um, our audience what are maybe one or two hamstring stretches that they can do right there in the bed, on the couch, to really get those hamstrings stretched out. Absolutely. So after we've started moving, I'm going to show you two different ones. One's going to be really simple, uh, and the other one's maybe take a little bit more muscle that's also kind of in involved with it. So uh, we're going to start with one. So you can actually be laying in the bed still. You can bring one leg off of the side. Okay. So you can lay back, right? So you let this leg come off, because one of the big things that has an issue with stretching the hamstring actually on this side is the fact that this will all of a sudden start rising up. Gotcha. So right? you're letting that hang. Right. So this, this side is hanging off of the bed. And, and we're also getting a hip flexor stretch. Right. And then here, you can hold right underneath here, right underneath your, your thigh, making sure your low back is flat, and then we're just going up. Whoo! That looks like it's serious. So. Now I'm getting a, what they call a dynamic stretch on that hamstring. I'm going as far as I can. So how many, how many reps, Adam, of that should a person do? So thought is, is three sets of, three sets of 20. Okay. So you do, do 20 of them, relax for about 10 to 15 seconds, do it again, 15 seconds, and then do it again. Okay, so that's one variation. Sure. Now just say I'm not, I'm not that mobile. Right. right. I can't pull my leg up. I haven't pulled it up there since <laughs> 65. Sure. Right? <laughs> so what, what else can I do? All right. So next thing is, is you can either get a rolled up towel. And then what you want to do is you're going to be putting it right underneath your ankle. So what that does, it actually lifts us up a little bit. And we're going to should have some space here. All right? So she has some space right underneath like that that back part of, of your knee. Mm -hmm. So from here, as you're sitting up, you're gonna bring your toes up to your nose, and then you're gonna be slightly just starting to go forward. Now, should my back be straight? Well, the idea is we're kind of coming as an entire unit. Okay. Uh, and so what you don't want, and this is a common thing that I'll see is this, right? right. And they start like, oh, you start ar ar arching there. If you can't do that e efficiently while you're doing it, so you can just go and just start doing ankle pumps. So Oh, pointing nice. your toe, pulling it back up, and now I'm still getting that, that hamstring stretch because now I have gravity pulling my, my, my knee down, stretching that hamstring because I have this elevated. So if you're watching this and you're actually sitting in a chair, you can actually practice straightening your leg out and just pushing your toe back towards you and should feel a little bit of that right now while you're doing it. But this is a great move to be able to, and anybody can do this, Absolutely. so there's no excuses right there in the bed. Now, I see you have some balls that you brought with sure. you over there. Now, what exactly is that for? Sure. Are those for hamstring as well? Absolutely. So okay. one of the biggest issues that I find in the hamstring where we have a soft tissue restriction is going to be on the inside of the knee. So you can kind of feel on the back side of your knee, you'll feel this kind of, kind of like uh, on the inside. So not here, but on the inside, you'll feel that tendon right there. Yep. So if you get a tennis ball, you can get, uh, this is like a, a lacrosse ball. Uh, anything that's kind of a little bit hard. Some people e even use foam rollers there. So what you do, this is a, what they call a active release of that hamstring. Okay. So you get the ball there, you put it like kind of right above where that tendon's at. And then when you, a lot of people will do like, oh yeah, I, I feel it there, that's good. Uh, so you'll know wh when, you, when you're on it. And so what you're gonna do is gonna slightly push up and then you're gonna put your pressure all on that ball. And you're gonna go back and forth 20 times now, now, Adam, what exactly is this part doing? So, so this, what, again, it's muscle prep. Uh -huh. So what we're doing there is we're compressing a tight muscle to try to get it to elongate. 
So as we're going back and forth, I'm compressing and also elongating the tendon and also that muscle to that hamstring. Now, can this help? That can this help release some of that pressure off of that knee as well? Absolutely. And have you found that when people do this and they actually stand up, now that they're getting they're getting a whole lot less pressure? Absolutely, because they so. can actually get more extension in their knees. Right. Perfect stuff. Perfect stuff. Make sure you guys follow this. If you have some sort of knee injuries going on, if you're online watching this, this is what I like to call maintenance, right? Um, people like to go out and walk, but you may be injuring yourself even more if you're walking and you haven't prepped correctly, if you haven't warmed up, if you haven't stretched correctly. And next, we're going to get into, because we're running out of time here in a minute, we're going to get into some muscle activation and why that's important. And we just don't want to go straight in muscle, into muscle activation because we want to make sure we got the muscle relaxed, stretched, yeah. prepped as well. So let's talk about muscle engagement um, just for a minute here. We talked about stretching muscles around the knee. We're talking about loosening up that tendon and how important right. that prep is. How important is the muscle engagement part? And which muscles should we focus on if we had maybe a knee problem or a knee replacement or we're facing some sort of knee trouble? Sure, so the biggest thing is, like as we get older, our quadricep muscle, or this, like your, Which your, your, your front thigh muscle, okay. uh, actually gets really weak, uh, and it actually starts shrinking some. So just, and so we start changing when, and moving because of that. When do we use that muscle? How, show, tell so them how important that muscle is. When do we use it? So, I'm using it right now. So, so, so <laughs> anytime you're standing, you're moving, Every single time you take a step, it actually is slowing you down, right? So it's trying to help you actually move forward. Uh, anytime that we're actually extending the knee, we're using it. And then the hamstring and quad actually work together as we're actually sitting Show back Show everybody exactly where the hamstring is <laughs> and where sure. uh, the glute muscle is as well. Okay, right? so quadricep muscle is on the front part of your thigh. Hamstring is going to be on the back part of your thigh. And then your glute is going to be, there's a lot of different glute muscles. We think of it as just being one, yeah. and there's several, right? So your glute max, like the big muscle that, that, that we would see is on like on your behind, and then also comes over and across over like the lateral part of your hip. Good, 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 good. Well, that's good stuff, Adam. Look, I appreciate you coming out, man. Yes, sir. You showed us some very good stuff. Did we learn some stuff from Adam today? Yes, sir. Great. So let's give Adam a round of applause. Thanks, sir. Appreciate you, man. Thanks for coming on. Okay, guys. I mean, I really uh, wanted Adam to come on and, and really give you some real good nuggets of how to get prepped. Uh, it's not just about muscle activation. It's not just about you going out and walking the dog in the evening. It's about doing things correctly and making sure that your body is prepared to get stronger. All right. So next, we have Dr. Harris coming up in just a few seconds here. Actually, 57 seconds. Are we getting something out of this, Tisa? Yeah. Good, 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 good. I'm going to work out this is the sixth pump I think I have. Yeah. Let me go ahead and add a few more. So, Dr. Harris here is a uh, chiropractor uh, in the area of Sugarland. Um, he is also um, the founder of Sugarland Health Center. Doc is very interesting and he has some very interesting practices. Um, when you think of chiropractic, I think of the first thing that come to comes to my mind is the back, right? But after sitting down with Dr. Harris and <coughs> talking with him about some of the patients that he's dealt with from a migraine standpoint, he's come up with some very cool solutions when it comes down to migraine. Could you briefly share some of the things that you figured out um, to help people that have, I'm not talking about a simple headache, I'm talking about people that have been in uh, real bad car accidents and they've had headaches and migraines for years, they've been able to come see Doc and have that disappear or be reduced greatly within a short period of time? Um, I like to use an analogy. If, um, can I touch your neck? Yeah, you can touch my neck. Come on, Doc. If, if I was x Don't break it. If I was an x-ray <laughs> seeing this big, mm -hmm. and I'm looking on the x-ray, in the very center, we'll call it the spinal tree. 
there's a tear from an old injury. Do you think the ring right around that tear was also affected? Do you think yeah. every ring was affected? I, I would. The bark? The same thing's true here. What I've developed, and this is not something I was taught, but something after 41 years of experience that just occurred to me, is treatment of every layer. So through the years, I've seen a, a total of six different things, layers to headaches. So I do six layer treatments and, and the results are dramatic. Is that Monique? Is Monique here? Is this the one of mine is, is here. Is that the young lady that you spoke about that had the headache stroke. for had the stroke and the headaches were so bad she had a stroke. Headaches were so bad she had a stroke. So what did you end up doing for her to make her snap out of those headaches? It's a combination of um, realignment. The nervous system is a is a is a primary uh, cause of headaches. Most headaches, uh, you have primary and you have secondary. Most are primary. Most primary headaches are tension, and by far most of those come from the nervous system. But the nervous system uh, produces nerves that come out of the top of the spine and go back up into the skull. All right, that's one layer. Another layer is soft tissue. Um, the muscle, fascia, you know, there's so many injuries to our neck that occur in auto accidents and right. sports. Wouldn't you say a lot of this comes from, uh, well, you said sports. Pretty sure you get a lot of football players, or you hear a lot of football players that are having in-car accidents multiple times a day. You could say hitting the helmet to helmet. Yep. What about stress? How big is stress? You did say the nervous system or, you know, anxiety, stress. Does that play a pretty nice part in... Yes, but it's a magnifier. It's a magnifying glass. If there's not a problem there to begin with, stress is not going to cause trouble. <clears throat> some people under stress get headaches. Some people get ulcers. Some people get asthma. Right. Why is the difference? It's because there's a problem there to begin with. Right. The that stress. Makes sense. It's like the sun <clears throat> is not going to kill the grass unless it's low on water and unless nutrients. Low on water. Gotcha. Gotcha. So it, it's a maintenance program that has to be in place as well to make sure that you protect yourself from quote unquote those sun rays, right? Well that's a valuable part of chiropractic is um, is prevention. Gotcha. And maintenance. So making sure that it's all taken care of before you get to that point of no return. Right. Um, so Doc, we just got finished talking with Adam and we spoke a lot about uh, knee pain and some prevention from that standpoint. Um, I did want to touch on headaches for a minute, but I really want to get into uh, the back with you. Okay. Right? There are a lot of individuals that are suffering from uh, back pain, whether um, someone has went, went, went and got back surgery or they have you know, slipped discs or they just have, maybe they just haven't been on the right prevention program, right? Let's talk about the first solution that you would have for individuals that are in this audience and that are watching online that may be just starting to get to a point where their back is hurting and they don't know what to do. What are the checkpoints you should check before you go off to that chiropractor or to that doctor? Maybe some things you could do on your own. Okay. Um, I'd like to respond in this way. The, the most common scenario I see in, in back problems started with an injury in teenage years or childhood. Right. And uh, the brain locks up a problem joint because it doesn't want to irritate, it doesn't want the nervous system to irritate because that's how it's operating the body. Well, that's like kicking a can down the road. Right. When you lock up a joint, the disc is not eating, and so it dries out. When it dries out, it goes down. When it goes down, it catches up with the can and starts irritating that nerve. So I would say most back pain that starts showing up, uh -huh. it's brewing in there. So it's already cooking, Yeah. and this is something... So how can you identify that? Because some people just say, man, my back just went from zero to 10 yesterday. Yeah. So you're saying that was brewing up a long time before that dramatic jump. Yeah, whenever whenever I see a patient that, they said, man, I just bend over and pick up a piece of paper and my back went out. Well, there's something brewing in there. And that yeah. was just the last straw. But also, um, is this a good time to mention about a preventative thing? Yeah, yeah go, ahead, go right ahead. Uh, people don't realize this, but if if you bend down and pick up uh, five pounds like that, 
that's five pounds of screen on a little back. As soon as you bend, you're engaging the, the weight from here up. And I had a guy that um, was in his garage and there were some boxes. He wanted the one against the wall and there was another in the front. And he bent over to pick it up and it was heavier than he thought. And so he knuckled through it and felt the pop. He strained his back. He came in on his hands and knees. He, he ruptured three discs, pure swine. That was 100 pounds from his waist up that was on the low back. 20 pounds uh, of the weight of the box. That's 120 pounds. Do you know what the amount of strain because of the leverage is on the low back? 120 times 10, 1,200 pounds. So, Doc, what is the proper way to lift that box? I got to get it up. It's in my garage. My wife is beating me. She's talking bad to me. I got to get it up. She don't care that I'm hurt. How do, well, how, how do I go get that box? I got to get the box. I can't go back in the house. In that scenario, he should have moved the box in front out of the way, mm -hmm. get close to it to where he could lift it uh, correctly. Right. And am I going, so when I'm stepping up to the box, normal normally an individual will go straight down this way. Yeah. Right, which is wrong. That's wrong. So how should I, how should I do this? Use your legs. So I should go down in, in more of this motion yeah. and back up. As soon as you m use your legs, even if you're bending a little bit, the, the legs are taking the strain, not your back. Right. Makes sense. Makes a lot of sense to me. And when we were talking to Adam about uh, stretching the hamstring for the knee, we also understand that the hamstring is important for the lower back as well. Right. So how big of a role does the hamstring play um, in preventing injury on the lower back? Um, it can it play a big role. Um, I'll show you a way to prevent that. It's really Please. good on the golf course. Uh, was, oh, oh, you say what? It's really good on the golf course if you uh, feel I a little, need to, I need to see a this. little catch going on. Okay. If you'll go up to your golf cart, is this okay with this yeah, one? Yeah, yeah. And um, you're going to have a straight back and straight leg. You want to put your weight on your arms as soon as possible and pivot at your pelvis where you're going down like this. Adam was saying that a while ago when I had the clip. If you feel a pulling in the, in the hamstring, you just take about three deep breaths. Go down a little more, don't go too much. You're not stretching muscle, you're stretching fascia. You and what's the difference between fascia and muscle? What Muscles are like rubber bands. The fascia is what's in between the muscle fibers and between the muscle groups. Between the bone and the muscle, between the muscle and the skin, and that's not a tissue that stretches very much. Right. But over time, it can. So, Doc, let's talk to the individuals that um, that are driving a lot for long periods of time, or the person that's sitting at their desk and they're like this all day, right? Which a lot of them are like Most this people. on the phone now, right? Yeah. And they end up with you know, pain in the back. So just say if I'm driving from here to Chicago, what should be my plan on that trip to make sure I do not have back pain by the time I get to Chicago? Well, you need to take breaks. And if you wait till you feel like you need to take a break, you waited a little too long. The, the amount of time that I've seen is about an hour and a half to stay ahead of it. Got you. Stop at every Bucky's, <laughs> an hour and a half. Clean his restroom. Yeah. <laughs> move around the joints are made for motion they're mm -hmm. not made for sedentary so you give them what they need some motion and yeah. i'd recommend that stretch gotcha and you do that every hour and a half it, you'll you'll, you'll have okay. a good you'll be okay okay so that's that's real good information are you guys getting some some good stuff from that make, make sure you're taking mental pictures or writing down um so next thing i want to talk about is something that um, a lot of people deal with as well and that is the sciatic nerve right um, there's a video that, Nick, if you can run that video of, um, this is me in uh, Doc's office a couple days ago, and he was actually showing me where the sciatic nerve was located and where um, the problem was being caused. So could you hit on that just a little bit and kind of reiterate what you were showing me there yeah. and why most people get that super aggravating burn or shooting sharp pain down that leg? The, the last three... Uh, nerve roots that come out of the spine come together to form the sciatic nerve right. and <clears throat> if you have back pain with no leg pain that's the simplest problem 
If you have back pain and leg pain where the back pain is greater than the leg, that's number two. Back pain and leg pain where the leg pain is greater is number three. It gets more difficult. Right. Leg pain only is yeah. number four. There are reasons why you are in those categories. Is that a build up as well? It's it's probably how many disc herniations are involved and how bad they are. Right. So most people with sciatic nerve problems that's coming from uh, discs. The lower three levels. Mm. And it's real common. I do a lot of MRIs and um, I'm amazed that I had one yesterday <laughs> set the new record. All five lumbar vertebra herniated and two up in the thoracic. Ooh. So that's a tough case. You know, they don't respond as fast. But we've got, we can do more for that today than ever before with new technology and new techniques. How could you give a person that's, that's suffering from, from sciatica right now, they're watching online, maybe they're in California, they can't get to you. What are some things that they can do uh, if they're just approaching that sciatic nerve condition? What are some things that they can do at home to maybe, you know, help deal with it or help turn that thing around? The best thing they can do at home is phone the chiropractor and make an appointment. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> um, and find a chiropractor that has disc decompression and a class four hot laser. That disc and chiropractic, those, okay. that combination is the strongest. It's the gold standard now. Okay, can you say that again? Disc decompression? Spinal disc decompression. That's a sophisticated traction control by a computer. Okay. Uh, class four hot laser. Okay. Uh, laser's amazing. And then there's chiropractic techniques that be a little bit difficult to go into that. Right, right. No, I understand. If they have decompression laser, they're going to be up on the technique. Okay, so there's nothing they can do themselves to kind of at least take it down from a level 10 of pain. I'm trying to get to a 7 where I can, The best you know, thing is ice packs yeah. on the back. Heat is your enemy. Heat is the enemy. Okay. And, and 95% of the patients come in, they're doing the heat because it feels good right. on the skin. Right. That's not where the problem is. And if my sciatic nerve, I, I got this, this, this pain shooting down my leg, I'm going to go and put ice on my back. Right. Most people try to put it on yeah. the leg area, but it's the actually coming from the back. The leg is a light bulb. The leg is a light bulb. The back is a switch. The back is a switch. You put the ice on the back and the switch. Every, that makes sense? Good, good, good. So, Doc, I see you have uh, a book here. Could you tell me about this real quick? Yes, I'm a contributing author in this book. It was written by Dr. Fernandez. He's written 22 books. Mm -hmm. um, and it's... It's, it says neck pain, but it really uh, involves the, the whole spine. Okay. And I, Dr. Fernandez is my first consultant, and I hired him a second time 20 years later. He's now asking me to come teach. Oh. And one thing I taught him was how to use his own book. Right. Because if, <laughs> if I give this to a patient, because this will tell you what you're doing that's incorrect and how to correctly do things. Right. Um, if I hand this to a patient and say, I want you to read this and make those changes, my experience is one out of 20 will do that. So this book is strictly on neck pain? No, it involves the whole spine. It involves the whole spine, okay. So it's very thorough, very detailed. So I don't want patients to try to read it. I tell them, just look at the picture. When you find something that applies to you, mark that page, read that section. Right. You can rifle through the book in an evening that way gotcha. and then go back and reread what applies to you and make as many changes as possible. I had a lady that she uh, was a 10 on the pain scale. She got to a 4 and got stuck. This is when I first learned how to use this book. And I said, you're doing stuff incorrectly. She said, I can't think of anything I'm doing incorrectly. So I told her, gave her the book, told her what I just said. That was a Friday. She came in Monday. And everything she had about around. 50 dog years. <laughs> and she said, I'm not doing anything correctly. And in a week, she was down to zero. So this is an important aspect of treating. Patients need to make changes right. on what's causing the problem in the first place, and then we make changes that they can't do. That combination is strong. So, Doc, are we giving this a book away today? Yeah, uh, yeah so, door prize. So, so, so what I want to do is this. Nancy, could you pick a letter between E, B, or B? E, D, or B? E, D, or B? Mm -hmm. B? Okay. Ron, yes, can you give me a letter? One through ten? A number. A number, I'm sorry. Seven. 
B7 is empty, but we're going to go to B6. <laughs> Sir, get your book. <laughs> How much time we got? By all the right. way, that's a money back guarantee on that book. Nice. And Doc has also laced all the tables with uh, nice little baggies and some little gifts inside, so some information. So make sure you you read up. And uh, excellent. Um, I want to thank you for coming on, sure. Doc. This is some very good information. Did you guys enjoy Dr. Harris and the information that he had to provide? Give him a hand. Yeah, that's it. Show my gift. There you go. There we go. <laughs> If you have back problems, make sure you visit Doc at the uh, Sugarland Health Center, okay? So what we're going to get into next is something that I call the JBIT Med Pro Pain-Free Assist. Each show, we, have, we highlight an individual that um, has been helped by one of my products. Um, and today, we actually have that individual here. And we're going to talk to him just in a second but we want to go ahead and play his, uh, his video. When I was about 16 years old, I decided that I wanted to be a professional, professional cowboy. cowboy. So uh, I had my, my first surgery, surgery at 16 uh, with, with uh, Carl to my knee. Um, since then, I've had 17 surgeries. Uh, took me back together. I had knee problems and back problems, and it's made it difficult for me to function in a normal basis, even with the surgery. Uh, so when I put on the uh, j it began to relieve the pressure off my joints. Um, and instead, it started building the muscles. At first, it seemed very strange, it seemed like I was floating. But what happened after that is that I began to establish a rhythm walking with the bands to the point that I was able to increase even the pressure. So by walking, uh, I've learned how to make and balance myself and I'm getting full benefits. I feel my muscles are increasing, the joints are not hurting. It's even affected my back, which I have partial artificial. Uh, and it's changed tremendously just in my posture, how I feel. My wife and I are walking two and a half. Um, miles every, every day, day at about 3.7 miles per hour, without any uh, pain, uh, residue from having from, from that at all. So it's, it's been phenomenal as far as getting that pressure to the point that I'm trying to tell everyone. shows me that muscle is being restricted and uh, ended up getting uh, one of my devices over to him and as you can see from the testimony we were able to do some great things so I wanted you guys to sit just for a second here and I actually wanted to talk to Nancy <laughs> and uh, because we heard what how we were able to help Ron Nancy how has the improvement of Ron um, made a change in your life it's made a huge change we both like to be active, and I don't really have the issues that Ron has, but uh, we've only been married about seven years, so we like to do everything together, so we exercise together, And um, but it was holding me back because he couldn't do our walk like we wanted to do. We couldn't, couldn't go as fast and, and as long as we wanted to because he just couldn't do it. Right. So uh, I felt like that held me back because I didn't want to go off and exercise without him. Right. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. my wife would have probably just left me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're still newlyweds. <laughs> cool. So, Ron, uh, I know the sound was a little low here for people in the, in, in the audience. How many surgeries have you had? So far? I've had 17. 17 surgeries. How many knee surgeries? Um, three on one knee, two on the other. Right. And when we first met, I... I had to convince you that I had something that could potentially help you, <laughs> right? <laughs> and could you talk about the minute you tried the solution that, that I provided for you and how, how you felt? Yeah, I, uh, I appreciated your, uh, your explanation of it at first, so I was very willing to uh, give it a chance. It was besides that you were bigger than me. But uh, it was <laughs> give it a chance. And, and when I first put it on, I think I took about three or four steps and looked at you and said, 
I feel like I'm floating. I feel like I, I am not touching the ground. Right. Um, at that time, it just it was strange because the way it kind of pulls the back of your mm-hmm. your foot up, and uh, so you even made a comment that some people feel like they're mo- you know feel like they're walking on the moon or right. something. But and I think we spent an hour in that parking lot uh, working did. on it. And the thing that was amazing to me is the more I walked on it, the more I realized what you were saying because it was beginning to relieve my knee joints. I some days even when we're not just walking for exercise, I had to wear that knee joint. Right. And uh, I um, I probably have a party and burn all my <laughs> all my braces now. Very good. Very good. Very good. <laughs> I'm I'm glad we were able to alleviate some of the pain. You said you were able to walk a certain length of time and then you would get the pain, right? Where is that pain now that uh, you're experiencing with JJ? I, I, you know, without it sounding um, ludicrous, I don't have any pain now. And it's a, it's a, uh, a residual because there's been times when we've gone and and done something and walked all day and I didn't have the JBIF uh, MedPro on and I'm still not feeling the pain. And the reason for it, I think, from what you told me originally, and I feel it now, is after about a month of that, the muscle building was happening in my right. thighs, in my calves, and then some of the little muscles. So right. my leg is not doing this because I have no cartilage in this leg. I need right, a, right. the You're doctor told me, I, yeah, I need a knee replacement, which I've already had one. Then the other thing is just is a byproduct, I have that nerve problem that we've been talking about already. Right. That's going away. That's I excellent. don't have that sciatic nerve pain that I've been having. Um, I just finished an MRI in the middle of us learning about the, the, uh, um, the JBIF, and he said there wasn't a lot he could do because I've already had one back surgery. I'm fused back there. I have two artificial uh, uh, vertebrae. Man, I, I tell you, it, it, it warms my heart every time that I hear a testimonial like this, especially being able to help Nancy so you don't run off and leave wrong. Right. So, <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. so I appreciate you guys for you coming bet. on the show. Uh, could we give Ron and Nancy a round of applause, please? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. At this point in time, for all of our audience that's online and the audience that is here, um, from my company, we want to give a special offer uh, of the JBIT. Um, actually, uh, at our site, jbitmanpro.com, if you go there, if you're online watching and you go there and you put in the code JBSHOW, um, you'll actually get a FaceTime call from me. And yes, I'll call every individual and we'll talk about your pain together. And uh, that's my offer to everybody that's watching this show and also the individuals that may be here that have pain. Also, individuals that are online from the medical professional world um, are athletic trainers. If you're interested in helping us reach more people and help more people that have pain and you're looking to maybe help us by becoming a distributor, you can email uh, Damien at Damien at JB3Innovations.com. So you see that there? You can uh, make that happen that way. Okay, so we're going to take a quick break here. Uh, for about two to three minutes and uh, we have coming up at 620 uh, Miss Houston and also Mrs. Uh, Teen Houston, Miss Teen Houston, sorry, okay.
right, guys. Well, you got that? <laughs> all right, guys. Welcome back to the Jonathan Bender Health and Wealthiness Show. Um, right here, right now, we have Miss Houston and Miss Team Houston. Hey. A round of applause. <laughs> when do you have the Miss Houston and Miss Team version in the same place at the same time? So we have Miss Alicia and Miss Kennedy. How are you guys doing today? We're great. Thank you. I'm doing good, very good. well. Thank you guys for being on the show. Of course. Thank you. So I want to talk to Miss Houston mm -hmm. first, right? Since that's, uh, uh, you know, she Maybe is older, right? Mm -hmm. she, okay. okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so let, let's talk about, you also are Texans cheerleaders, correct? Yes, I did that for four years. For four years? Mm -hmm. Okay, so can we talk a little bit about the sure. experience that you garnered from uh, being a Texans cheerleader and how that plays into your mentality now of approaching health on a daily basis? Right. So honestly, when I first started cheerleading, I wasn't a big fitness person. I was just like, oh. So you ran into shock. Yeah. When you got so there, when right? I made the team, when we started dancing and learning different routines, I was like, oh, I can't do this. <laughs> like, how do y'all keep up? But then we right. worked with the trainer and I was like, okay. And so at first you're like, this is so boring, but then it, it becomes a part of your everyday life. Right. And I think that's when your body's like, when you don't work out, you're like, okay, like, why do I feel like slumped? You right. know? So I'm like. So when you started working out with the trainer, was that the first time that you did like a structured sort of workout um, yeah. in that type of environment? It was the first time it was structured. I mean, I've always like I've run, like ran before, but right. I never had somebody say, "Okay, now it's this thing," or like now it's an next one. I'm like, "You haven't done that." Right, right. So then it it, <laughs> it it just becomes a habit. Right, and yeah. and switching over to you know being Miss Houston. Right. How did you get from Texans cheerleader over into that arena? It's actually pretty funny because I had just completed my fourth season, which is the 2016 and 17 season. Okay. And I was, of course, I was on social media and I was on Instagram and I saw the Miss Houston flyer and I was like, um, can I do that? I'm like, no, I'm too shy for that. And right. so I saw it again. I was like, you know what? I'm going to sign up for this. It's another, it's another great way to get my body back in shape because right. after cheer, I gained like 10 pounds. So I was like, this is my time to just eat whatever I want. Uh -huh. And I was like, no, no, no something has got to change and so with the pageant I started training every day and like working with that and so even now I'm like if I don't go to the gym I'm like I feel groggy I'm tired I don't have energy so did you actually have a trainer for the pageant as well no I pr pretty much did everything what I learned doing Texas during with Texas. our trainer and I kind of like flipped it and was like okay you have it on your own now you have to push yourself you got to push yourself mm -hmm. so you had a goal in front of you that made you want to keep going right, right? right. okay Miss Kennedy right Hi. Okay, <laughs> now how much did Leisha have an effect on you? Or did you know her before you got into the pageant? Or do you guys meet your, how well, did you meet? Well, we were very fortunate to have the opportunity to meet before the actual pageant day. Um, our director put together a bunch of different training in right. order to get us ready. So I knew all of the girls before it was time to compete, which is really great because it built the sisterhood like when we both got crowned it wasn't like i don't know who leisha is like i had met leisha and been spending time with her a month ahead of time so um a part of the trainings we did like walking and interview and things like that but we also had some um days where we would actually go and work out okay. and so how, how were those workouts right so are the workouts is it is it more dieting for you guys? You know, you got a pageant coming up. I want to make sure my hair is done right or laid right. I want to make sure this is right, laid right. How much does the actual workout come into play? Well, it's not just like dieting and right. just laying back. It's it's actually pretty like intensive. Actually, like right. of course there is the dieting aspect, but you also have to work out. Like it right. doesn't just come easily. You have to go to the gym and do different types of workouts. Right. So outside of the structure that they have for you are you normally um i would say uh, accustomed to look i'm the workout person i got to get up and get it in or if i lack for two days now i got to get up and get something done right are you that type of person well i was a cheerleader previously like before oh, the pageant right. okay. and so i had cheer every day and we had to get ready for nca nationals and that two minutes and 30 seconds of going full out on the floor uh -huh. so you it wasn't an option like i had to in order to com complete my goal but for me like just after cheer before the pageant I just like kind of was relaxing like right. Lisa and not really right. doing anything so we got to bring this down for all the young ladies that's out there that they may, they may feel like they're okay right mm -hmm. they're getting the whistles from the guys and all that stuff but eventually 
is going to all go downhill later, right? Mm -hmm. And I think for you guys, having the cheerleading aspect, because you might as well say you guys were athletes, right? right? We are athletes. Well, I'm sorry. No ifs. <laughs> we are. Well, I'm sorry. You guys are athletes, so you were you were already um, pushed to the to, to into the area of training and how important it is, and you had to do it, right? Yes. Right. So your mentality was switched to a point of, I don't already been through the pushing of this, so everything else is easy. What would you say for uh, the young lady that's out there right now that's not working, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe their health is going down, but they look good. Right? right, their body looks good, but they're not working out. I mean, I think that, like, I'm not a believer of like getting on the scale and like weighing yourself just because it, it fluctuates every single day. Right. Um. So one of my personal things that I think about is, yeah, you may feel fine now, you may look good now, but like eventually it's going to catch up to you, and you may have to start going to the doctor because yep. of or of this complication, or you may have to do this because it will catch up eventually. Right. Um. And so like me, I used to be obsessed with Coke. So I was like, oh, I can drink you four. Drink Coke, no. I'm like, I can drink four <laughs> Cokes and I wake up the next day and I, nothing's changed. But then like I woke up one morning and the room was spinning and I had to go to the ER. And he was like, if you continue this, like you're not gonna be in good shape and you're just in high school right now. So that's yeah, what gave me the like, okay, you, you need to get it together. You had to change. Yeah. So take me through what your normal workout routine is on a normal basis. Um, so you're not working out for any pageant. Right. You're not working out to get ready to go on the field. This is just you feeling good, taking care of yourself, your body. What does that look like right, when you go out for a workout? So I usually start um, either on the treadmill or I'll go to the park and run for like 30 minutes. Uh -huh. um, if, I'm, if I'm in a gym, I'll get on the elliptical. I'll start doing the Stairmaster. I'll do weights. So mm -hmm. every day or every other day when I go to the gym, I kind of like to switch it up. So it's okay. not like the same workout. So when you just said, you said a key thing, every day or every other day. So you mean to tell me you're going to the gym every other day? How many days Right now in my normal life, it was every, uh, I go every other day. But when I'm training for something, I go every day. So you want to hear that. They're going yeah. every single day, and this is Miss Houston talking. Mm -hmm. So no matter how much you have fallen off or you put on 10 or 20 pounds, you can get rid of that. Because you put on 10 pounds, yeah. how fast did you get it off? It was like a month. A month, it took me a month right? Yeah. yeah, that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. It's and never too late to start. It's never too it's late never to start. Late. And Kennedy, for the teenagers out there that are, you know, eating what they want, you know, they're candied up, they're, like I said, Coca-Cola is all this sugar, you know, um, when you're young, your, your, your body is naturally a certain way, but mm -hmm. eventually, you know, that slide, that dip is going to come. What would you say to them to encourage them to get in some sort of workout routine and take care of their body? I think that most women or just young people in general, like as you were saying, like they think they're young, it's okay. But just because you're small or just because you're skinny, that doesn't mean you're healthy. Right. You can be skinny fat. Yeah. Exactly. And just because you're bigger, that doesn't mean that you're not healthy. Like, right. your health comes with how you take care of your body. And in order to be healthy, you don't have to be a certain size. But you have to work out. You have to look at what you're eating and take all of these things into consideration because yeah. your body is yours. It's not Lisa's. It's not mine. And it's something that you have to work at. Right. So, Kennedy, what is your ro workout routine? Look like? First of all, how old are you? I'm 18. I just turned 18 last week. So, 18. So, all of you teenagers out there, 18 year olds, and I'm pretty sure you're into your books, right? Yes, of course. So, um, don't use that as an excuse. A lot of people like to look for excuses. I don't have time, right? Mm -hmm. I don't have time. I got studying to do. How do you get around the studying and still get your workout in? Okay. So for me, um, school is very important, especially like with going to college. I'll be attending Howard University in the fall. Oh, round of and applause. So, <laughs> and so it's just making sure that I do prioritize school, but at the same time, you have to keep the mindset that if you're not healthy, if you're getting sick all the time because you're just letting your body go to waste, then you ultimately can't focus on school because right. you're not there. So making sure like I go home, I do my homework, anything that I need to do regarding school, and then after I'm done, I'll take time to like go outside and do something So you go do that first. Get yes. the homework out of the way. Don't let that linger on. Yes. So take me through one of your simple workout routines. Not for not getting ready for cheerleading because, mm -hmm. you know, when I tell somebody, okay, this is how I work out, well, they think, man, I'm, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> you, you, yes. you work, you're doing NBA workouts. <laughs> but your normal, everyday, just 
you know, natural little workout. How do you, uh, how does that look? Okay, so I really don't like to run, so I make myself run. So you typically, like, I have the Nike Run app on my phone. Uh-huh. So I live in a, um, I would, we live in Pearland. So, like, uh-huh. I have, like, the suburbs or whatever. So I'll run down the, the path in my um, neighborhood, and it'll show how much I've ran. It'll also, like, give me different goals. Like, if I ran, like, two miles yesterday, it'll push me to run a little extra the next day. Um, and then after that, I'll do things like abs. There's a lot of cool apps for that, too. Mm-hmm. Um, I take things from here. Like, we have this thing called Kelsey's Ab Workout. Right. And it's a combination of different styles of crunches. And then after that, I'll take, like, a pull off. And then I'll do things like um, box jumps or something nice. like that. Nice. Very nice. And now it's no excuses because everything is on YouTube. Yep. You want to know yes. how to do abs? Go to YouTube. Exactly. You want nice legs? Go to YouTube. Mm-hmm. Right? Yes. All of that, right? So my last question is, you want to be Miss Houston one day, I'm sure? Yes. All right, so she's breathing down your neck. What do you have to say to that? I she's coming out to your crowd? I mean, she's a great. I mean, I would. that's my position right now is to be a role model, and so right. she's like my little sister, so of course. Oh, so you've given her all yeah. the tools that yeah, she needs. Yeah, so there's right. no, like. No, of course. <laughs> you said. <laughs> <laughs> she gave me squirt. So, uh. Thank you guys for coming on the show. Thank you for having us. Absolutely, absolutely. I hope uh, you young ladies uh, heard some good stuff, got some good uh, information of how these young ladies are taking care of their bodies and keeping themselves up. Um, Just because you look like you look good now, Mm -hmm. it's not going to stay that way. (laughs) Careful. All right. So let's keep it going. That's it. All right. (laughs) Appreciate you guys for coming on. Thank you so much for having us. No problem. No problem. Okay, get next we have um, a mental health specialist by the name of uh, Miss Evelyn Trailer. And uh, I believe mental health is one thing that uh, a lot of people are hiding from. Uh, we just saw in the NBA that uh, Kevin Love and uh, who else was that? Nick. Nick, who was that? Who, who else was that? DeMar DeRozan. DeMar DeRozan. And uh, Kevin Love both came out and uh, exposed the fact that they suffered from mental health conditions. Uh, I think one was depression and uh, DeMar was uh, something else going on. But just to say that, I think it gives a lot of people and a lot of young kids the opportunity to say, hey, you know, I'm suffering with something and it's it's cool now to actually get some help. So uh, I'd like you guys to give a round of applause for Miss Evelyn Trailer. So, uh, first thing, Evelyn, I want to get into is um, we talked before about a lot of uh, bullying with young kids that lead to uh, suicide and things like that. Some of these kids have some real issues going on. Um, how much of that has you, have you seen with what you're doing out there in the community, and what type of solutions are you guys providing for them? Yes, and unfortunately, we see a lot, and mm-hmm. I have several parents and other, you know, students and that type of thing telling me about it also. Uh-huh. Um, we're we're at, as for our organization, Advocate for Healthy Minds, and if you all look at our website, it's advocateforhealthyminds.org, and one thing we're trying to do is to get our classes, we offer eight different classes into our school, right. and one is about anti-bullying. So you're actually going into the schools Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. setting up sort of a classroom format for kids? Right. Yeah, okay. Right, and and what our whole goal, of course, is we're a train-the-trainer program, which that means that teachers, counselors, and so on can uh, actually, you know, give the class too, so that way we can reach more students. Because with everything that's been happening that you all are watching the news and so on, we need to get this out to every student possible as soon as possible. Right, and it's a lot of, uh, you know, you hear about the shooting that just happened um, a, a couple of days ago, um, you have kids that are being bullied, kids that are keeping all the anger in or things that may be happening at home. What are some of the solutions that you guys are putting out there that are, are some of the signals that some of the teachers and parents should be looking for, or not even parents, some of the relatives should be looking for when it comes down to a kid that's about to get, you know, that's approaching the edge. Exactly, and then unfortunately, most of our children are not telling their parents or talking to their parents, and so that's why it's so important for us to get these classes into the schools. We talk about having good self-esteem, 
you know, uh, skills for anxiety, depression, suicide prevention. One of our classes is how to talk to a friend if you think they have suicide ideations. Mm -hmm. And um, with all of that too, because uh, the, the ones that, that we've seen, of course, I think most of them were begging for help basically you know, depression and so on. What would be some of the symptoms mm -hmm. that you guys have, ha have kind of seen out there? So our audience here and some online, if they, uh, maybe they run across that and they can identify, mm -hmm. right? Um, we, we, we talked briefly before also about how, yeah. one thing we need to really analyze and look into is why are these bully, 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 or er, bullying, right. you know, type thing too. And so um, it, it's pretty much what you hear on TV when these shootings do happen. That's a lot of it is coming from home. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. It could be from home or it, it's usually um, kind of at home or just not, uh, parents aren't paying attention or talking to their children and I'm not trying to make anyone feel guilty because parents go, well, yeah, we listen, we talk to our child and it still happened, whatever. Right. And so, uh, again, why they need to, you know, the, like I said, the child isn't going to a counselor, it's going to the parents. And so, right. like I said, the classes we're giving help them learn how to deal with it themselves. Right. You know, for example, like in fifth grade, there may be this person you can talk to. In eighth grade, there may be this right. person you can talk to. So when, when we're dealing with, um, I, hear, I hear a lot about kids that are getting bullied online. I really didn't understand it because if I'm getting bullied online, which you're not going to bully me, first of all. Right. But <laughs> if you're getting bullied online, why don't you just turn your phone off? Right? I don't understand that. My, if somebody's bullying somebody online, just get off of the feed, get off of Facebook, or get off of whatever you're on, but it seems like these kids are addicted to it, or that's where the community is, and that's where, you know, a lot of the uh, the trouble is starting to begin. Are you seeing that a lot with kids as well? Yeah, definitely, definitely, and it's with adults and kids, but we're, we're all on our cell phones. A lot of adults are getting into that as well? I mean, cell phones, we're yeah, all phones, on our phones, sure, and so sure. on, and which isn't healthy for all of us by any means, and kids really do need downtime too, away from the cell phone, away from TV, away from video games, right. you know, ways to listen to music or whatever. Do, do you guys mm -hmm. offer a program that gives like al alternative solutions to uh, parents and how to approach their kid to get them off the phone? Because you got a problem right there. Mm -hmm. If I'm coming to take Johnny's phone away, he, he may throw a fit. Right. Or I'm taking right. Susie's mm -hmm. phone away, mm -hmm. she may throw a fit. So in your programs, could you expose how do you guys combat that or let's equip the parents with some information that they can approach their kids the right way with? Absolutely, because things I'm seeing and reading also is mom and dad need to put that cell phone down also. Right. You know, I know how many of you go into restaurants and everybody's on the cell phone. It's like, well, why did we come to eat together? We're not even talking <laughs> to each other, right? Right, <laughs> you know, right, so right. At, 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 if you're out of the restaurant or there also, but also game nights, you know, things like that where the family That's does it. things together. You yeah. know, reading that, together. And they call that old school, right? Exactly. Game night, game night is yep. old, game night is old yep. school, yep. but it's something we probably <laughs> should bring back now right. uh, for the kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm pretty sure they'll have every Family excuse time. in the world. Yes. Family yeah, time, exactly. right? And when it comes down to the kids not wanting to do that or come back and against that, do you guys offer some solutions for the parents of how they can kind of get around the kid, or is it just, look, this is what you're going to yeah, do? Yeah, whether you like right? it or not. Whether right? you like it or not, right? <laughs> is that the approach? We, we do. Uh, well, we do have suggestions for that, definitely. Right. Uh, another class that's going to be starting here in the summer is it's called Mental Health First Aid. It's out of D.C. Uh, it's a national program. It's right. quite, you're a qualified person to give the class. And we will be offering those also. Right. And it, it is ways to help your child or ways to um, see, you know, what signs are or to be right. able to, you know, find out what's going on right, right. before something and happens. And with everything mm -hmm. that just happened with Hurricane Harvey here, mm -hmm. right, I was in Katrina mm -hmm. <coughs> down in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And after all of those people were stuck on all of those homes and stuff, nobody really got any, you know, mental health, right? Mm -hmm and they needed it and still need it today, right? Mm -hmm. So with everything that just helped happen in Harvey, you got a lot of kids that were infected mentally. Um, have you seen that? Or have you seen the effects of that um, with some yeah. of the classes mm -hmm. that you guys are doing here in Houston? Oh, absolutely. Um, it, it's getting better, thank goodness. And yeah. we have been very lucky in this whole area, in Fort Bend and Houston and the whole area, that we have been getting a lot of help from a lot of mental health, different mm -hmm. types of organizations. Um, for example, children didn't want to leave mom's leg, the little, some of the younger ones, they started bedwetting again, things like that that were just really severe anxiety. So, so mm -hmm. from just seeing that, mm -hmm. going through uh, a situation where you see water come in your home like that or you're happen, mm -hmm. having to uh, escape your home, mentally it's taking you backwards mm -hmm. or mentally it's putting them Absolutely. to 
a place where they're, you know, wetting the bed, like you say, or right. not wanting to get, a, you know, mm-hmm. not wanting to leave their mom's leg because they feel like they'll never see them again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. What are some of the other things that we've seen um, that you guys have seen from Hurricane Harvey that have uh, affected the youth? Oh, definitely severe anxiety with youth and raw adults. You know, but there's still a lot of people don't know, you know, around the United States that there's still people cleaning up in this whole area. Um, right. I know our wonderful cameraman Nick has been through a lot of things with his family and with his home, and he still has things that are going on. Right. Um, you know, we worked with FEMA. We had meetings every weekly meetings of who's doing what. We had some awesome people that were just helping muck out the houses with one step and then the next step and then rebuild. Right. You know, that type of thing. But as far as, as mental health-wise, we did have help available, finally. But people you know, kind of forget that it. part, you mm-hmm. know, because uh, mm-hmm. the first thing you look at is, mm-hmm. where am I going to live? How am I going to get my mm-hmm. home back? Um, mm-hmm. How am I going to get my kids settled back in? How am I going to get my car back together? Mm-hmm. How am get I going to put job. my life, <laughs> my job, everything mm-hmm. back mm-hmm. together? And w- in the midst of building all of that stuff up, you're getting more anxiety and more stress, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So for the people outside of the school, just for normal um, individuals, have you guys have any statistics as far as um, people actually reaching out to you guys or reaching out to mental health specialists after a tragedy like Harvey? I don't have statistics, but knowing different people that are uh, that are involved in all the different organizations, there's a right. lot of people have reached out, thank goodness. But right. we still have the stigma. You know, people don't want to talk about mental health. They don't want to admit it. So I'm very proud and very admire Kevin Love and yeah. people li- you know, like him that are in positions where you know, our children a lot of times look up to pro-athletes right. like yourself. And people, and are gonna so they'll pe- listen. people usually say, mm-hmm. oh, well, they, mm-hmm. think, uh, they think that somebody's going to think I'm crazy mm-hmm. if I go and I try to approach mental health. Uh, for instance, I went when I went back to the NBA after being out for four years, right. uh, they suggested I see somebody. And that was the best thing ever because I had been away from a high yeah. level of competition for so long. So coming in and having someone to talk to to understand that, that was very, very good for me. So um, like you said, I do, uh, uh, you know, big ups to Kevin Love mm-hmm. and, uh, and, and those Absolutely. guys out there for, for doing that. So for anybody out there in our audience or anybody online that may be feeling like, hey, I need somebody to talk to or um, maybe they have a friend that may have some symptoms, what should they do? Is there a hotline? Or there definitely what, is. There, there's all kinds of hotlines. And again, our website is advocatesofhealthyminds.org. We have all the different hotlines available there for teenage, you know, for adults, for veterans, for everyone out there. Yeah. But the three words I would like to definitely have you remember is I need help. I need and help. And it's okay to ask for help. I think those are three mm-hmm. other words. I mm-hmm. need help and it's Okay, two yeah, words. Yeah, there you go. It's yep. okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. I agree. I well, agree. thank you, Miss Evelyn, for this time yeah. and being on the show. Can My everybody pleasure. give Miss Evelyn a round of applause? <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, mental health is very, very, very important. Um, I think uh, the as more of us approach uh, getting help with, with certain situations, whether it be you had a death in the family, mom, Maybe uh, you had a father that passed, or maybe you have a sibling sibling that passed, and you think you're okay. Um, most of the time, you're not. You need somebody that you can talk to. Um, if you're feeling a little weird, feeling a little anxiety, or just not being able to get along with people, call that hotline and talk to somebody. Or talk to somebody within your family. You know, it's good to let things go uh, through a conversation. So next, uh, we have up. Uh, uh, Mr. John Romero from Total Nutrition out in, uh, out in Rosenberg, Texas. Um, nutrition, I'm going to bring this uh, full circle. After we had Dr. Harris up, we had Mr. Adam up, we had Mr. James up, and we talked about uh, muscle engagement. We talked about stretching. We talked about how you carry fat around, but muscles carry you around. But there's this one very, very, very important uh, thing that we need to understand. And I, I want to invite Dr. John Romero up. I mean, Mr. John Romero up. He's not a doctor. Could you give him a round of applause, please? Thank you, much. So as you sat up here and you heard us discuss um, back problems, knee problems, you heard fitness information, you heard uh, stretching, you heard warming joints. Um, we talked a little bit about muscle engagement, but with you, we're talking about nutrition, yes. right? 
how important does nutrition play when it comes down to an injured person trying to get their body stronger and a person just trying to get themselves back in shape? Well, nutrition is probably one of the biggest part. You know, like I think Jeff Tripaner talked about earlier, and you asked him how long does it take for somebody to recover after those workouts. You know, eating properly, you know, it can help recovery, uh, speed up the recovery a lot faster as well, right. too. You know, we just talked about depression as well, getting an accurate source of protein and have amino acids. There's an amino acid that can actually help you in, in improve your mood as well uh, and help you just feel better as well, too. So, so they, actually have, they, actually, they actually have those. So what you're saying is people sometimes slip into anxiety. Um, could that be partly because of their diet? Yeah, I mean, high cortisol levels is a high stress level. It can, it, can, it can make you feel anxious. It can make you feel like you're depressed as well, too. You know, increase your, your fat. You know, when, when somebody else, uh, like obese people, you know, sometimes come into and see us, and they usually have no, uh, you know, they're always, they're always real down. They don't have any, any kind of, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They don't have any energy. Any confidence. Any either confidence, well. right. Exactly. And, and most of the time, it's, it's poor diet as well. It's poor diet. That yeah. can play on that. Definitely. Right. So when it comes, let's talk about losing weight. Because I know, uh, you know, half, 90% of the world thinks they're fat, right? And uh, in some instances, that may be true. But uh, <laughs> we have skinny, fat people. You know, mm-hmm. you know, it's not just big people out there. There are people that are skinny and fat as well. But as the world is trying to lose weight, how important of a role does nutrition and having the right type of nutrition plan play in losing weight uh, successfully? The, the important part is to get the right nutrition for your body. Not everybody needs the same nutrition. Uh, you know, if someone, someone skinny is trying to lose weight and trying to gain weight, it's not going to be the same nutrition as someone that's big trying to lose the weight. Got you. you know, so every, everybody's nutrition intake is going to be different. Okay. Uh, and that's one thing we do at Total Nutrition where I work is uh, providing uh, that, that person's needs, whether it be to gain weight or lose weight or build muscle, whatever so, it is. So do you guys in Total Nutrition, are you uh, an establishment where a person is trying to lose weight, they can come in, they can talk to you or another person that's a nutritionist <coughs> or a nutrition expert, sure. and you can put them on some sort of plan, correct? Sure. So, so if I'm a person and I'm looking to lose, just say, 10 pounds, over the next two months or three months or whatnot, what's the first thing you want to tell me? What's the first thing you want to put me on? Well, the first thing I'm going to ask you is what, what you're doing right now. You know, what's your diet look like? What kind of exercises are you doing uh, right. that are going to help you? You right. know, it's not just get on this and right away it's, it's 10 pounds. You know, it's I've got to figure out what it is you're doing to try to incorporate things into what you're doing already to help you achieve that goal. Right. So. Protein for a second. I want to get on this subject. It's a big mis- misconception, I believe, with protein. People that are trying to lose weight, they don't want to take a bunch of protein because they feel like they're going to bulk up and blow up. Then you got the people that are looking to you know, gain weight. They want to take a whole bunch of protein. So yeah. for the person that's looking to lose weight, what is the proper intake of protein? When should it be taken? And how should you, how should all of that be set up for a person? Sure. Well, like you said, protein, people do think that protein is like this miracle muscle maker food or protein uh, supplement they're taking. Uh, if you're trying to lose weight, the main thing you want to focus on is lowering those things that are making you fat. So decreasing your fat intake, decreasing your, your carbohydrate intake, sugar. Like so that means no bread? Sugar. What's that? No bread? You can eat bread. There's healthier options to bread. Look for something that's high, high in fiber as well. Uh, whole grains are going to help you a lot more. Uh-huh. Uh, try to reduce soy intake as well. But protein is going to be good. Uh, because it's, it can make you feel fuller, so instead of eating all those carbohydrates and fats, having a good source of protein uh, can make you not only feel fuller, but help you with everyday bodily functions. Right, so people who are looking to lose weight, um, some people have been told to take their protein after they do their workout. Sure. Some take it before they do their workout. I heard you say before you should use it as a meal replacement. Right. So what is the correct sure. way if a person is trying to lose 10 to 15 pounds, like I said, the next two months? Should I use protein and I look at it as a meal replacement? Should I be taking 45 grams sure. or more? Should I stick with what? Should I stick with the lean body? What, what should sure. I do for that? So per, there is, you know, protein, there's not like you only take it after you work out, before you work out. But you should, have, you should be having protein with every single one of your meals. Now, it is important to get protein after your workout to start the recovery process, after your muscles are being broken up and broken down. 
Uh, and then you can also use a protein source before you work out to actually help you fuel your workout as an energy source too. I want to stop you right there just sure. for a second. So um, if I'm a person that's looking to go work out, mm -hmm. I'm looking to lose weight, I'm, finna, I'm, I'm about to go train, how important is it to get that pre-workout in? Mm -hmm. right. Well, you want to get it about an hour or so before your, your workout. Get your body digested, get some carbohydrates in there as well that are really going to help you with energy. Uh, and you asked how much protein you should be having. Yeah. Also depends on your goals. Your, your average person who is not very active should have about half its weight in protein. So right. if you weigh 100 pounds, have about 50 grams of protein a day. Now, if you're very active, you, if, you, if you're an athlete, if you're a cheerleader, if you're trying to be a bodybuilder, you're probably on a little, bit, little more protein depending on what your goals are. And then if you're trying to lose weight, I heard about the six meals per day. You need to be eating six small meals. Is that about sure. right? So what I always tell a lot of my customers is, when you have protein in your meals, uh, you know, look at your open palm of the hand and you should be having about that size portion in your meals. So for my yeah. hands. You're a big guy, man. You need a lot of protein. <laughs> yeah. So what if you got a little person with big hands? <laughs> They're kind of need a little more. <laughs> so about the size of your palm for protein intake and then when you close your fist, that should be about the intake you have for carbohydrates with your meals. And then as far as vegetables goes, you know, I usually recommend about a handful of vegetables per meal as well. Gotcha. So there are a lot of individuals in here that have some sort of joint pain condition. Mm -hmm. And they've been told by people, other trainers, myself, to make sure that they muscle engage so they can have their body weight sit on top of that muscle instead of on the joint, right? right? So when it comes down to a person that's going to work out and is trying to build up muscle to protect the injury or whatnot, um, Give me the time frame post the workout that a person should take protein or some sort of supplement that is trying to build up and strengthen their body. So they call that the anabolic window after a workout. So you want to try and get some kind of source of protein in about an hour to an hour and a half after your workout. So within an hour, an hour to and a half, you mm -hmm. need to get that protein in to get to the muscle. Preferably something fast digestive. You know, if you're out there going and eating a steak that digests very slow, it may not your body may not digest all that protein in in time to but really but get And that also by the time you go home, take a shower, mm -hmm. get in the car, wait on the wife. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> get in the car, go drive to get the steak. It's already three hours. Sure. So the easiest way nowadays that people can get that fast protein in would be a protein supplement, something that's 100% whey or an isolated protein. What type of protein do you guys have at Total Nutrition that so you would suggest? So we offer everything. So it suggests for after a workout or yeah, every for, day? For, for that, for, like I said, the people that have some sort of injury that are trying to build up muscle sure. to strengthen up their body around that injury. What type of protein would you suggest for a post-workout? So post-workout, I recommend 100% isolated protein. It's the purest form of protein you can get. It's very fast digestive. There's no soy in it. There's no milk in it. It's not free. It's kosher check. I mean, it's basically grass-fed whey organic protein. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Very, very nice, man. Yeah. Well, that's some real good information. I hope you guys got some good information from, from uh, John here. We have the same names. Jonathan. Yep. That's what's up. Good name. So make sure you get out to Total Nutrition, and you had an offer for everybody, everybody sure. that's everybody in the audience. If you guys shop at any one of our stores, we have eight locations here in Houston. Uh, you get ten percent off. Just let them know that you came to the Jonathan Bender Show. Uh, and if you're watching, uh, just give us a call. We'll place a phone order. Thank you, thank you, John. Sure thing. Appreciate thank it. Just give him a round of applause. So. Again, just to recap, I hope everybody enjoyed it. This is the end of our show. But just a quick recap, if you're online and uh, you missed our offer for the JBitMed Pro that's helping with joint pain, if you go to jbitmedpro.com and order and put in the coupon uh, code JBSHOW, then uh, you'll receive a FaceTime call from me as well. And also, uh, Total Nutrition, you visit here in Houston, you get 10% off. Just mention that you were part of the Jonathan Bender Health and Wealth in the show. So keep a lookout for us. We'll be providing a lot more great information from a health standpoint and from a wealthiness standpoint. We'll have some entrepreneurs on our next show. So make sure you follow us, like us, and I uh, hope everybody enjoyed the show. Have a nice day. Cool. Thank everybody for coming out. Thank you guys.